Hi there, Grant McComey here, and welcome to another edition of Travel Oregon's Grant's Getaways. Well, this week, as you can see, we've come to the Oregon coast, and we're paying particular attention to these Oregon's whitewashed wonders called lighthouses. And we pay special attention to one particular lighthouse in the central Oregon coast where service and duty and dedication run deep as we visit Hasita Head State Park. In winter, except for surf and wind, the coast slows down. Few distractions, fewer folks around. Many people like it that way. At the rocky headland called Hasita, named for 18th century Spanish explorer Bruno Hasita, the landscape is marked by a gleaming sentinel, a whitewashed wonder with a light atop that can be seen for miles. And if you stop in, plan to spend some time with Aceta Head State Park volunteers, like Ruth Phillipson. There's so many people here from just down the way. Reedsport, Florence, <laughs> Newport. You know, when they come here to visit their lighthouse, they play in their backyard, and that's very cool. While deep inside Aceta Head Lighthouse... All this brick, remember, came from San Francisco, so the whole tower. Park Ranger Clay Courtright can teach you much about Aceta history. How many steps to the top? Uh, 58. 58 steps. Built in 1892, long before coastal highways, horse and wagons were only means to move goods to Hesita Head, a two-day journey from nearby Florence. Three men crews were stationed at the remote outpost, but they were not alone. Families joined them too, a life of work and serious responsibility. Between the isolation and especially prior electricity, it, it was very labor intensive. There was a lot of work. There was a small garden. You had to have, be somewhat self-sufficient on your food side of things. And then your homes needed to be well kept. There's a lot of work to be done. The Fresnel glass lens was shipped around the Horn from England and it needed constant care. It could be seen 21 miles from shore, making it one of the most powerful beams in its day. Nearby, Carl Washburn State Park offers plenty of elbow room for you to stretch out and play in a quiet parkland. 58 RV sites and a couple of yurts, and then uh, we do have a hiker-biker camp, and then the main campground itself is open year-round. Hasita is one of nine lighthouses managed by the Oregon State Parks Department, but it's the only one whose keeper cottage is still standing. It's a bed and breakfast where you can enjoy a longer stay. It's very isolated, there aren't any other residents around, yet it's on one of the most popular highways in, in the United States. It's nice that it's preserved this way. The Queen Anne-style B&B offers six rooms. Each one spies a stunning view to the coast. They boast a seven-course breakfast and even share the recipes in this new book about their place. There are no phones or television, but an inviting front porch with a spectacular view that will keep you coming back for more to get away from it all. Leave the hustle and bustle. Enjoy this view. Enjoy each other. The folks who care for our whitewashed wonders, whether state park employees or the volunteers, they are a dedicated group who provide lots of TLC for our lighthouses. So the next time you pay a visit, be sure you say thanks. Both Hasita Head and Washburn State Parks are open daily, but the lighthouse cottage that requires reservations, and you can find all the details on the Travel Oregon website. So until next week, get out here and make your own outdoor adventures and let Travel Oregon be your guide. For Travel Oregon, I'm Grant McComey.